Hello and welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to set up LAMP on your Raspberry Pi. Now, LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Uh, so, in effect, that gives you a web server, and we're going to demonstrate this on your uh, home network. Uh, there's a way to actually expose that uh, um, uh, web server to the outside world. I'm not going to cover that in this video. Uh, but this uh, procedure will set the stage for that uh, so that you can experiment that uh, with that uh, on your own later. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, you need to have already installed the Raspbian software. Uh, and I cover that in another video that shows you how to format the SD card, uh, get that inserted into the Raspberry Pi, uh, and uh, uh, get that software installed. So you need to have gotten that far, that part of it, uh, requires uh, a keyboard and mouse uh, and uh, a monitor. Now, uh, once you've gotten that far, uh, we're actually going to disconnect the keyboard monitor. Uh, we don't need it for uh, uh, this portion. We're going to run the Raspberry Pi in what we call headless mode. Uh, so really, all you need to do uh, from here on, if you're using wireless, uh, you can disconnect everything and just plug the Raspberry Pi in uh, or you can connect the Raspberry Pi to your uh, a DSL uh, router or cable modem uh, with an Ethernet cable. That's actually what I recommend. It's a better way uh, to connect. Uh, it's uh, more reliable. Uh, I'm going to show you both ways, uh, so you can do it either way. Uh, so, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing you need um, when you uh, uh, connect um, uh, initially uh, and install the noobs, uh, install the software uh, using the noobs uh, packager that uh, I demonstrated in my first video. Uh, at some point while you're still connected to the monitor, uh, you need to connect to your wireless network if you're going to be using wireless. Uh, and, and there are a couple of places you can do that. Uh, before you click install on noobs, I've got a screenshot here showing uh, that there's an option uh, to connect to your Wi-Fi network uh, uh, here. And what that does is that allows you to uh, put in your Wi-Fi password. Uh, and that gives you your initial connection uh, to Wi-Fi. Uh, because once we, we uh, uh, disconnect from everything, there's not going to be an opportunity to configure that without jumping through some, some big hoops. Um, so if you catch it at this point, uh, that's fine. Uh, and then you can go ahead uh, and select the uh, uh, Raspbian uh, installation here as I show in my uh, previous video. Now if you miss this, uh, when you go into uh, uh, the desktop, if you go into the desktop for the first time, uh, there's a little uh, network icon here. You can, you can select your uh, network uh, at that point and then uh, enter your uh, Wi-Fi uh, key here. Uh, so two points you can do that uh, and then at this point you can uh, uh, shut the system down and we can proceed headless. Now, there's another thing that we need uh, and it's convenient to get it here. This is a static screenshot so I can't really show you how to do it. Uh, but we need uh, the IP address that you initially get uh, through what we call DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Uh, we're going to need to configure a static IP. Web servers uh, typically have static IP addresses because we don't want them to change. Uh, and IP addresses that you get from your home router uh, can change over time. Uh, so we're going to want to assign a static IP. Uh, and the first part of this uh, demonstration is going to show you how to do that. Uh, but we, uh, we need to start with the, the IP address. Uh, and the easiest way to do that uh, is uh, on the Raspberry Pi here at, at the top left of the screen. It's not showing on this uh, uh, screen print. Uh, is a terminal icon. You can run a program called ifconfig. Uh, and that will give you an initial IP address that we can start with. And I'm going to show you that program in a minute. Uh, uh, and, and you can get that IP address because we need that to start with. Uh, once you have that, uh, you can disconnect the keyboard, the mouse, uh, the monitor, uh, and just go ahead and plug in. Uh, now, uh, at that point, the way we connect to the Raspberry Pi is through a terminal program. Uh, there's a terminal program that comes with a Macintosh, uh, and um, uh, you can just run it, and I'll show you how to connect uh, to the Raspberry Pi with that terminal program. Uh, for Windows, there's a sort of a semi-GUI program that gets you into the terminal window, uh, and that program is called PuTTY. 
Uh, and you can get at it at uh, this URL. And I'll give you a second to take a look at that. Maybe pause the screen and jot it down. Uh, you can do one of two things. You can either just download this first uh, executable, uh, copy that to a directory somewhere, maybe make a shortcut. Uh, there's also an installer package that installs a couple of other utilities. It's this one down here. Uh, so you can get that installed, uh, and I'll show you how to run that in a second. Uh, and then for the Macintosh, as I say, uh, there's a, a terminal. Um, uh, you open up a terminal window uh, and execute the program. So uh, then um, uh, we need to take a look at uh, your router uh, before we get into that uh, and make a couple of adjustments there. So uh, let me talk about your home router now. You have a router or a cable DSL modem. Uh, we'll take a look at mine. Uh, all of these things work approximately the same. The screens look different, so you might have to fish around a little bit. Uh, but um, uh, I'll show you what we're looking for, and then you can find it. Uh, so uh, the first thing you need to do is uh, find um, uh, your, your router's address. And it's going to be one of two things. You can try, um, uh, you can try them until you find it. Uh, it's either going to be 192.168.0.1 uh, or it's going to be 192.168.1.1. Uh, on rare occasions, it's something else. Uh, you might call your ISP if one of these doesn't work, uh, but try one or the other uh, and uh, you'll get to your uh, login screen uh, for your modem. Uh, the login uh, is almost always admin. The password could be a few different things. Now, increasingly today, the password is often uh, printed on a sticker on the modem somewhere. Uh, you can try that. Uh, there's also online, uh, if you go to uh, www.routerpasswords.com, uh, you can look at the manufacturer uh, and um, uh, do a search here, uh, manufacturer and model number, uh, and that'll give you the default password. Now. Uh, understand that the password here is is not the same password that you use to uh, uh, log your uh, uh, PC uh, or your Mac into the wireless uh, um, network. Uh, that that's a different password. This is the password to the administrative program uh, on your router. Uh, so at any rate, uh, what we want to do is log into this administrative program, and then what I want you to look for first. Uh, is um, we log in. Uh, it's probably going to be in advanced setup. It may be somewhere else, but what we're looking for uh, is the DHCP setup. Uh, and what we're looking for in particular, uh, and it happens to be here, uh, are the beginning and ending uh, ranges for the uh, DHCP addresses uh, that your router uh, assigns uh, when uh, somebody tries to log into your network. Uh, and the reason for that is we need to assign a static IP that's outside of that range. Uh, now increasingly, I've seen something like this where you have a beginning DHCP address and an ending DHCP address that spans the entire range. And the entire range is this last set of numbers here, and it would go from 0 to 254. Uh, and that's not going to work for you because then you have no uh, numbers left uh, to assign for a static IP. So if you have something like this, uh, I would recommend that you change that um, to something like what I've got here, um, to something like 100. And that means that starting with 101 up to 254, you would have those numbers uh, to assign uh, to a static IP. So I could assign a static IP that would be, uh, for example, 192.168.0.101. Uh, and that's the example I'm going to use the, the, uh, this afternoon. Now, the other uh, way that this sometimes uh, is displayed is that it will give you a beginning uh, DHCP address. Uh, and I've seen sometimes those are like, um, oh, maybe 192.168.0.100, and then it will give you a number of addresses that are reserved, say 50. 
Uh, and so that would mean that from 100 to 150 would be reserved for DHCP. Uh, and you could choose numbers outside of that range for static IP addresses. So you'll have to play around with that um, uh, for a little while. Uh, and um, see if you can find it, and then uh, make sure you understand uh, the range of addresses that are reserved for uh, DHCP, uh, which you can't use for static IP addresses, and then uh, addresses that are outside that range, you can uh, use a number there uh, to assign to your web server uh, for a static IP. And the reason you want a static IP is your web server should always have the same address, it shouldn't change. So you assign it a number that doesn't change, uh, and then you can always find it. Uh, so you may not need to make any changes. You just need to see uh, what numbers you could use. Uh, if your router uh, has assigned all of the numbers for DHCP, then you might need to make a change so you have some numbers to use. Uh, and of course, if you need to, you can click uh, Apply or Save. Uh, so that's uh, 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 something that you need to, to be aware of uh, on your router. Uh, now, the other thing that uh, we can take a look at, if you didn't grab uh, your uh, initial uh, PIES uh, IP address, because we need, uh, if we're not going to be connected to, uh, to it with the uh, uh, screen and keyboard and everything, uh, we need to be able to initially uh, connect to it. Uh, somewhere in here uh, with the settings, there's going to be some kind of a modem status. Uh, and uh, this will give you uh, here, uh, somewhere there's something called a device table or maybe connected uh, devices or something. Uh, and it will show you all of the devices uh, that are currently connected. Uh, and so, um, uh, and, and it may show if you've already plugged your Raspberry Pi in, uh, it may show uh, there may be an inactive device uh, here. So it may show your Raspberry Pi and, and you may already see a number. So I'm going to demonstrate here uh, what you can do, especially if your Raspberry Pi uh, hasn't yet been plugged into the network. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, so it has the, um, uh, it has the wireless built in. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and you can see, I think I'm going to, I'm going to hold it up here uh, so that you can see it. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug in uh, the network um, Ethernet cable. Uh, and all I'm going to do is plug this in, and you can see that there's nothing else connected here. So I'm going to plug it in. So, and you can see I'll turn it around. I don't know. Maybe you can see the maybe you can see the little lights blinking. Now I'm going to give this um, a full minute to warm up. So I will pause the uh, I will pause the recording here, uh, and and let this uh, fully boot. Uh, and uh, you can see that nothing else is plugged in here. can't see anything, so I, I can't see it boot. So I'm just going to give it a minute to boot up. Uh, and then uh, we'll come back. All right, it's been about a minute. I'm going to set this down so I can get back to my uh, keyboard and, and other stuff here. But, but it's sitting here, and it, it should be booted now. Uh, now what I'm going to do uh, is I'm just going to refresh this uh, page here. Uh, and you can see that I've got the Raspberry Pi showing now. So this is a way to get those numbers. Uh, and I've got, I've got two numbers now, you can see, because I'm demonstrating both the, um, uh, both the Ethernet uh, and the wireless connection, uh, these, these new numbers down here. So you can see that this is now booted up. Uh, and my device table and my router is now showing that the Raspberry Pi is connected. So uh, I'm going to write these numbers down here. Uh, I've got 04. Um, uh, four uh, is the um, uh, wireless, uh, and uh, I've got um, uh, dot eight is the Ethernet. So I've got a note of those now, uh, and that's going to allow us to connect um, uh, with the terminal. Uh, and the object here, the first uh, part of this exercise, uh, is to assign the Raspberry Pi uh, a static IP. So I I'm first going to connect uh, uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, with um, a, a terminal. Uh, I've installed uh, PuTTY for Windows, so I'll demonstrate uh, first a connection uh, with PuTTY with the Raspberry Pi. Let me uh, load this and bring it up so that uh, uh, so that you can see this. Uh, so this is PuTTY 
uh, for Windows, uh, and I simply need to pl uh, plug in the uh, IP address of the uh, Raspberry Pi that it's gotten with DHCP uh, into the uh, host name. So I'll plug in 192. Um, that 168. and I'll try the um, I'll try the wireless connection first, uh, and I'll click open. Uh, and what I'm getting here uh, is a potential security breach. Let me pull this window up so you can see it. It's just simply saying that um, uh, the server's coast key does not match the one Putty has cached in the registry. I I've used this uh, IP address before. Uh, there's a slightly different message if it's the first time it's being used. Um, uh, and this has to do with um, um, RSA keys. Um, it's a security message. Websites uh, that you see on the Internet have, have registered um, uh, security certificates. Uh, you may have heard of those. Um, and so if this were a website out on the Internet, this, this might be of concern uh, for you. Uh, but in this case, you can go ahead and say yes, because this is your own website, your own Pi, your own home network. So just go ahead and uh, say yes, and then you won't see this, uh, you won't see this message again. Uh, now let me bring over our terminal window, uh, and uh, uh, we can go ahead and log in. Uh, the login for uh, Raspberry Pi's default login, the username is Pi, uh, and the um, uh, password is Raspberry. Uh, which doesn't echo. Okay, and now we're logged into the Raspberry Pi uh, in uh, in terminal mode, and that's how we interact with servers. Uh, we can install a GUI administrative tool, uh, and I show that in a separate video uh, if you would prefer to uh, administer your um, uh, Raspberry Pi uh, server uh, in uh, uh, in a GUI. Uh, but for the installation and so on, uh, we need to be operating at the command line. Now, the first thing you, you may want to do uh, is uh, run the configuration uh, program for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that here, uh, and the command to do that is sudo. That's the super user command that allows you to uh, run at root level. Uh, and the uh, configuration program is raspy config. Uh, and so we'll run that. And um, there's not too much that we need to do here. Uh, one of them is the boot option. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at what that is. Uh, and um, there's no reason to have that overhead running uh, in server mode. Uh, so we can um, highlight that uh, and um, press Enter. Let me make sure that we've got that selected properly. Uh, I pressed tab, I selected that and pressed tab. I think that's the only thing that we need to do here. So we can click finish, uh, and uh, it asks if we'd like to reboot. We need to reboot to make that option take an effect. I'm going to say yes. Uh, that will close the terminal section, uh, and I think that's okay. That does cause the Raspberry Pi to reboot. Uh, so we'll need to wait uh, uh, for a little while, and then I'll demonstrate uh, what the terminal looks like in uh, Macintosh. So I'm going to pause for another minute while the Raspberry Pi reboots. All right, I believe the Raspberry Pi has had time to reboot now. Um, I'm going to close this uh, and uh, show you what it would look like for a Mac. Now, I don't have the Mac hooked up, but the Macintosh and the um, a Linux um, a system are, are, are virtually identical because the Macintosh actually is, is a form of, of Unix Linux underneath the hood, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is show you a terminal, uh, a Linux terminal, uh, and uh, it, it'll work just exactly the same. Uh, so here's a Linux terminal. Uh, if you uh, open up the um, uh, Macintosh uh, Finder window uh, and look under Utilities, you'll see there's a terminal window there. Uh, so this is exactly what it looks like on the, uh, uh, on the Mac. And what you want to do um, is... Um, I uh, use the SSH program that's built into a Macintosh to connect. So uh, here at the command line, once you open up the Macintosh terminal window, you just type in SSH. Uh, and then you'd use the uh, username, which is pi, and then at, 
uh, and then you type in the IP address and I'll, I'll go ahead and type in the um, uh, Ethernet just to show you that both connections work uh, and that's 192.168.1.0 um, uh, um, which was our other uh, IP address. Uh, and uh, we get a similar message um, uh, that uh, RSA, RSA um, uh, key message, uh, and uh, we want to continue because this is a, a private uh, server on our own home network. So we can type in yes, uh, and now we're at the point where we need to enter the password. So we key in uh, Raspberry, uh, and now we get at the same prompt. Uh, uh, we had uh, at the um, and so everything from here on in is is uh, uh, handled at the command line. Uh, we no longer have a GUI, the keyboard, the mouse, uh, and um, uh, uh, screen are disconnected from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and the next step then is to change those IP addresses we got uh, from uh, DHCP to static IP addresses. Uh, and you'll recall that uh, the way I set up my router uh, was anything above uh, 100 uh, was free, uh, 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 freely available uh, to use as a static IP address. So uh, I'm going to configure both the wireless and the um, uh, Ethernet uh, to static IPs. You, you would normally only use one, but I'm going to demonstrate both of them. Uh, there are a number of ways to do that. Uh, the easiest way is the following way uh, that I've found. Uh, and so let me uh, uh, pull up my notes here. Uh, and uh, um, what we want to do uh, to get this going uh, simply is there's a file. And this has changed uh, just, just recently with uh, the newest uh, version of Raspbian uh, called Jesse, uh, is to edit a file uh, in the etc. directory called uh, DHCP, dhcpcd.com. So let me uh, go ahead and get that started here. Uh, and I'll uh, zoom in a little bit closer so you can see what's going on. So we're going to do sudo. Let's get in here sudo nano um, make sure I type that in correctly uh, and this file has a bunch of comments on it what we want to do is enter this at the very top so uh, press enter uh, and then arrow back and enter these lines at the very top so first we'll configure the Ethernet uh, interface. Uh, so we're going to type in uh, the following lines. Uh, and um, uh, as a matter of fact, let me just enter this and then I'll let you take a look at it. So um, I'll go ahead and, and pause the uh, recording here for a second so you don't have to watch me type. All right. Now you can see I've got these typed in now. The, f the first one that I've typed in is our uh, the block that we would put in for a wired connection, the Ethernet connection. So uh, the interface is ETH0. Uh, the first line is the IP address that I'm assigning. Uh, that's the base address of your router. So remember, uh, we had to figure out um, uh, what the address was of our router. So the first uh, three uh, of, of this dotted quad here, the IP address is 192.168. And then you'll either have a 0 or a 1, whatever you figured out for your router. Uh, and then I'm, I'm giving that a 101. That was one of my free addresses. That number is going to vary depending on what you find out. Uh, and then a, a, a slash 24. This is a, a shorthand way uh, for uh, saying that um, uh, it's um, uh, th this particular class um, uh, of, uh, of address um, would, 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 would take um, uh, a... Um, a, a a net, a net mask of 255.255.255.0. I'll, I'll let you look that up if, if you're really curious about that, but it's a, it's a shorthand that, that means we don't have to put in a net mask. Uh, and then um, uh, the router, uh, this is our router uh, address, uh, and it also happens to be the domain name server address. This is typical for a home network if you were setting this up in a, uh, in a, you know, corporate environment or something, uh, then this this might change a little bit. So uh, there's our, our our wired address. If you were setting this up uh, for 
uh, wireless, they would look exactly the same, except the interface would be um, uh, WLAN, wireless LAN uh, zero. Uh, and then everything else looks the same. Uh, since I'm hooking up both, uh, I need a different IP address uh, for, for the two. I can't give them the same IP address, but uh, I, th I think you see what's going on there. So you can take a screenshot or something and and um, uh, that, make that work. Uh, and then um, uh, to get out of here to save this, I'm going to uh, I'm going to do a, a control X. You can see the, the help system down here at the bottom. I'm going to do a control X. Uh, and then I'm going to type Y uh, to save that uh, and so on. Now at this point, um, I need to reboot and remember that when I come back, um, and, and try to connect again. I need to want to use one of these two new uh, IP addresses. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do a reboot. Uh, and then, uh, of course, now I've lost my connection, so I'm going to pause again uh, while the Raspberry Pi uh, give that a minute uh, to reboot. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll come right back. All right, now that the Raspberry Pi has booted back up, uh, it's time to log in and see if one or both of our new IP addresses is working. Uh, for that, I think I'm going to go back uh, to uh, Putty on Windows. So let me uh, uh, close this uh, uh, window here uh, and uh, bring Putty back. Uh, and recall that we uh, uh, reconfigured um, our uh, static IP addresses. Uh, uh, one of them, I believe, was uh, 101. Uh, so let's see if this works. Now, um, because we've got a new IP address, we're getting the uh, uh, server message again. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, the RSA key message again. So I'm going to click uh, uh, yes on that. Uh, and it looks like we're being asked to log in. So yes, in fact, it uh, does work. So we're going to uh, log in as Pi. Uh, and we're going to key in Raspberry. And we're logged in. So yes, in fact, uh, uh, our uh, new IP address scheme works. Now, let's talk about that IF uh, config program uh, that I mentioned uh, some time ago uh, and see what our assignments are. So IF config. Uh, will show us what uh, our network configuration is. Uh, we just run that at the uh, 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 command prompt here. Uh, and uh, so we can see that um, here, and back up a little bit, our F0, uh, which is the configuration that we uh, set for uh, our uh, wired connection. Uh, in fact, uh, we do have 192.168.0.101 as a new static IP address uh, for our wired connection. LO is what we call the loopback um, uh, connection. Uh, that's a, a local uh, connection uh, that always points back to uh, the device. Uh, uh, we can talk about that uh, in another lecture perhaps, uh, but that's always set to uh, 127.0.0.1. Uh, useful for many things. Uh, we can talk about some other time. Uh, but we also see that our wireless uh, LAN, WLAN 0, uh, is set uh, as we expected to 192.168.0.102. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, you would typically only set up one or the other of those, uh, but uh, I've set up both to demonstrate that. Uh, now it's time to go ahead and install uh, the uh, web server uh, or LAMP uh, and uh, that's a pretty easy thing to do, actually. Uh, we just need to run uh, the installation program for uh, Linux uh, Apache. Uh, Linux is already installed. We need to install Apache uh, MySQL Server, uh, PHP 5, uh, and the uh, uh, PHP 5 MySQL connector uh, for the complete uh, stack. So uh, that can be done uh, here at the command line uh, in the following ways. We can do sudo. Uh, apt install, uh, and then we just uh, uh, name each one of the packages we want to install. I'm going to go ahead and type them all in at the command line here. So we've got Apache 2. Uh, we've got MySQL Server. Uh, it's MySQL-Server. 
uh, we've got PHP 5 uh, and we've got um, PHP 5 dash MySQL. So Apache 2, uh, MySQL Server, PHP 5, uh, and then PHP 5 uh, MySQL uh, connector. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and press enter. Uh, it's going to uh, collect a list of packages that needed to be installed. It's going to tell me it's 135 megabytes of additional space. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I want to go ahead and install that. Uh, and it'll take off. Uh, this is going to take some time, especially in my system. I have a rather slow internet, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, there are, are, are at least one or two places where it's going to stop and ask me for a prompt. So I will come back uh, for those and show you what those are all about. Uh, and um, uh, then we'll finish off the lecture. Now, at the point that uh, the installation program installs uh, MySQL, it's going to ask for a password for the MySQL root user. Uh, and as the installation uh, note uh, uh, says, you can skip this, but I would uh, uh, not recommend it. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a password. Uh, it's going to ask you to confirm that. Now, it's important that you remember that um, uh, it, it would be better to skip it than to enter something and forget it. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, then the installation routine will continue. Uh, and I'll go ahead and pause the recording again, uh, and we'll uh, uh, come back if it asks for uh, another piece of information. All right, that concludes the uh, uh, installation. Now what we want to do is test it. Uh, the first thing we want to test is um, uh, the web browser, uh, Apache. Uh, the installation creates a default index.html uh, uh, file in the web directory. The web directory is created here. Uh, on installation, uh, we can change to that directory just to see what's there. Uh, so let me um, uh, visit the uh, directory so we can see that. Uh, and that's uh, var um, uh, slash www slash html. That's your default web directory. Uh, and we can take a look and see that indeed there is an index.html there. Uh, so what that means is that we should be able to go to our web browser here. I'll, I'll hijack this page we had open before. Uh, and uh, we can type in the um, uh, IP address uh, uh, into our web browser. And that should take us to the default uh, uh, index page. So I can uh, then type in either one of the two addresses I set up. You'll, You'll probably only have one, but uh, we can go um, uh, 192.168.0.101, uh, uh, for example. Uh, and that should open up this um, uh, default uh, index page so we know that the web browser is working. Uh, the second thing we ought to do is we ought to uh, test uh, PHP. And the easiest way to do that is to create a PHP info page. Uh, we'll go back to our our uh, terminal session here, uh, and we're in the uh, uh, we're in the web uh, directory now. Uh, keep that in mind. So I'm going to open up a file called um, uh, PHP info. So I'm going to go sudo uh, nano uh, PHP info .php. Uh, We're going to use a, a PHP function called PHP info uh, that's set to display uh, all of the default settings for PHP. And that's a good way to check and make sure that PHP is working. Uh, so it's a real simple file. Uh, it looks like um, uh, it looks like this um, uh, PHP. Uh, that tells us that uh, PHP is going to be happening here. Uh, the um, uh, 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 function is PHP info. Uh, doesn't carry any arguments. We need to terminate uh, our lines with a semicolon. Uh, and then we simply tell us the uh, function that um, uh, PHP is no longer happening. Uh, pretty simple little PHP exercise here. Uh, I'm going to hit a control X uh, to exit that. We're going to type yes to uh, save the buffer. Uh, and now we can go back to our web browser. Uh, and uh, the same uh, uh, the same website here. Uh, and then we're going to say uh, PHP info .php. Uh, and that loads this uh, file that we just created. Uh, and uh, you can browse down and, and look at this. But the um, uh, point here is just to make sure that uh, PHP is, in fact, working now. Uh, at a later date, uh, you can use this sometimes for troubleshooting. 
uh, to make changes to BHP or whatever, but this in fact uh, uh, varies, uh, verifies uh, that PHP is in fact uh, loaded and uh, working in our new LAMP server. All right, the one last thing I want to cover just very briefly uh, is, uh, uh, well, actually there's two things I want to cover. Uh, first of all, now uh, that you have a web server, you're going to need to get files uh, in there. Uh, and maybe back out of it. Uh, and for that, you'll need a file transfer program. I want to briefly call your attention uh, to two programs that will do that, one for Windows and, and one for the Mac. Uh, the one for Windows is uh, WinSCP. That's a graphical program. Uh, I'm going to show you the site where you can download that. Uh, uh, you can take a quick look at uh, uh, the download site uh, here, uh, and then I'll uh, quickly show you what that looks like. Uh, you can get um, uh, here, uh, we're up to version uh, 5.92, I guess, as of the time I make this video. Uh, what you want is the installation package, the latest uh, release version. Sometimes they show a beta version up at the top. You, unless you're adventuresome, you probably want to uh, avoid the beta package. Uh, download this installation package. Uh, let me uh, load that up here uh, and show you what that looks like. Let me bring that into the recording window here. Uh, the host name, of course, is the uh, IP address, so I can type that in. You should be familiar with that by now. Uh, you can go ahead and type in the username uh, and password here uh, if you like. So that'll be pi for the username, raspberry for the password, of course. Uh, log in. Uh, and then uh, we get the cache message, of course. Um, uh, it works um, uh, di differently for PuTTY and for WinSCP. We can go ahead and say yes, it will authenticate. Let me then pull this window here. Uh, on the left side, uh, of course, is your uh, host system. Uh, you can scroll around here looking for files. On the right side is your Raspberry Pi. Uh, we need to uh, backtrack uh, to get to the web server. If you want to transfer files to the web server, you can use this to transfer files to any of the directories. So here are the directories for your home directory. That's uh, where you land when you initially log in. Uh, but we can backtrack to the root directory. Uh, and then we can um, uh, scroll down here uh, to uh, var. Uh, and then to uh, www, and then to HTML. Uh, this is where we would uh, uh, load files uh, into the web server if we wanted uh, to build a website. So you could create files uh, on your uh, uh, host machine uh, and then transfer those files uh, for a website uh, over to your web server. That's what it looks like for the PC. Uh, let me close that out uh, and um, uh, terminate the connection. Uh, for the Macintosh, I'm going to recommend a, a program called CyberDuck. This is also a free program. Uh, you can take a look at the site here. Uh, this is the home site. Uh, there might be some other places you can download it. Uh, I, I'd probably recommend you go straight to the uh, uh, home site. Uh, this works a little bit differently. I'm not going to demonstrate this. Uh, I'm on the PC right now, uh, but um, uh, it, it, it works um, uh, as a single uh, window application. Uh, there are a couple of different ways you can get it. You can download it from the Mac uh, store, uh, but if you do it that way, I think you might have to pay for it. The easiest thing uh, is to download this uh, CyberDuck for Mac as a zip file. Uh, I think if you're uh, far enough along to uh, uh, have gotten the Raspberry Pi up and running, uh, then uh, uh, you can probably handle a zip file. All you need to do is unzip it uh, and then uh, uh, copy the uh, uh, executable over to uh, your applications uh, folder uh, and then run it from there. Uh, it will open up a single pane window uh, and then you can uh, uh, drag files from Finder uh, to the, uh, uh, the uh, CyberDuck window uh, that opens up. Uh, and that way you can transfer files from your Macintosh uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that's the way you can get files back and forth uh, from your uh, host machine uh, to the Raspberry Pi uh, on your network. So enough about that. The last thing I want to cover uh, is an option uh, that you can uh, 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 use uh, to give your uh, Raspberry Pi server 
uh, a common name, and that's through use of the hosts file. Uh, and there's a hosts file uh, both on your Windows machine uh, and on your on your uh, uh, Macintosh. Uh, they're in different places, and uh, you go about them uh, a little bit differently. Uh, and so I'll show you first on the Windows machine how you do that, uh, and then on the Macintosh uh, how you do that. So um, the way to do it on the Windows uh, is to open up Notepad, uh, and you need to run uh, Notepad uh, as uh, uh, an administrator, otherwise you won't be able to edit this file. So here's the way you go about doing that. I've moved the recording window down, so now you can see the lower left of the screen. Uh, and what I'm going to do uh, is uh, right-click on my window pane, uh, and I'm going to click Search. This is for Windows 10. It's it's uh, There's a similar way that you can... Uh, uh, run this for earlier versions of Windows, but I, I imagine most of you have uh, uh, Windows 10 by now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is search, and I'm going to uh, search for Notepad, uh, and it's here. Uh, and then when I right-click on uh, Notepad, I can run that as administrator. Uh, and I want uh, to allow this um, uh, app to make uh, changes to uh, your device. Uh, now uh, I have a, a Notepad window, and what I'm going to want to do is file uh, open, uh, and uh, I, I need to uh, uh, open all files because I don't want the uh, default text extension. And what I want to do is navigate to Windows, um, I want to go to uh, System32, I want to go to Drivers, and I want to go to Etc. And there's a file on here called Hosts. Uh, so that's the file that I want to open. And it looks something like this. Uh, and there are a couple of examples here. Uh, and uh, uh, it shows you that uh, you can do different things. Now I have here an entry from uh, another uh, course that I run. But here's the one that I want to add for this example. Uh, what I want to do is I want to give it an IP address, and the IP address is the one that I set up as a static IP. So I'm going to type in 192.168.0.101. Uh, um, uh, and then I'm going to hit the tab key. That'll tab over. Uh, and then I'm going to put a friendly name. So I'm going to put MyPy. All right. Uh, and um, you could add some fake extension to it. Um, I could uh, add uh, mypy.net, for example. Uh, and uh, what this is going to do is this is going to create an alias so that when I type in mypy.net in the uh, browser bar, uh, it's going to load that IP address. So that's the purpose of a hosts file. Uh, and uh, make sure there's a, a return at the end of that. And then I'm just going to save that file. Uh, so I'm going to save uh, that file. All right, now let me uh, uh, reorient my uh, recording window again. So hold on just a second here. All right, now what I'm going to do uh, is show you that um, when I type in mypy.net, uh, my um, uh, Raspberry Pi's default uh, index.html uh, does in fact open. So this is a way of making a friendly uh, a friendly alias. Now, uh, it, it works um, pretty much the same way on the uh, Macintosh, but uh, the Macintosh host file is located in a different place. So let me uh, uh, bring up, uh, and again, uh, Linux and uh, uh, the Macintosh work identically. So I'm going to demonstrate this on the Linux because I happen to have uh, a Linux session open uh, on the PC here, but it um, uh, works the same uh, on the Macintosh. What you need to do is open up uh, the terminal window uh, on the Macintosh. Uh, remember, you need to go to uh, uh, the uh, uh, Finder, uh, your applications, uh, and then um, I believe it's under Utilities, and open up the terminal. Uh, then on the uh, on the Macintosh, uh, it's on uh, etc. Uh, uh, host. So you would simply uh, load um, uh, sudo uh, nano slash etc. slash uh, hosts, uh, and here it is. So you would you would add the same thing uh, down here, uh, 192.168.0.101. Uh, 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 and then a tab, uh, and then my pi. Net. Uh, press enter so that you get a, a clean line feed there. 
Uh, and then that will do the same thing on the Macintosh so that you can type in mypy.net uh, and uh, uh, in the Macintosh browser, then when you type in uh, http colon slash slash mypy.net, uh, then the Raspberry Pi will open. So uh, again, do that on the Macintosh. I'm just demonstrating it on this uh, system here because the uh, uh, Linux system and the Macintosh system uh, work exactly the same. Uh, so let me uh, close that out here. Uh, so I think that's everything I want to cover. Uh, perhaps a slightly longer video uh, than you might uh, be used to watching from me. Uh, but I did try to cover everything. Uh, of course, you know that in uh, YouTube, you can uh, click the settings there, uh, speed that up to 1.5 or 1.2, uh, and uh, cut down the time significantly. Uh, you can also pause, speed up, slow down, uh, and uh, so on. So I hope you found this helpful. Uh, I've, I found that um, uh, having the uh, Raspberry Pi as a web server uh, on my home network uh, is a lot of fun. Do a lot of experiments with it. Uh, I have some other videos that show uh, some configuration tools you can add to that. Uh, you might want to take a look at those. Thank you for watching. Uh, look forward to uh, uh, your comments and feedback. Uh, and uh, good luck. <laughs>